Welcome to Poland Daily History. I'm here in the studio with Anglo-Polish filmmaker Stefan Thompson. Stefan, good morning. Good morning, Nicholas. One of the, your most recent projects is looking at the whole issue of the nationalisation of land in Poland and businesses yes. after, the, after the Second World War. Uh, how, how's that film? You know, what, what, what were your main conclusions as a result of making that film? So the, the film I made is called They Built Our Happiness, which is a reference to a film within a film of a cult Polish film called Man of Marble, made by Wajda, which references the, build, the people who rebuilt Poland and who started building communist Poland. And it's a sort of, it was a, a sort of an, an inside joke in a sense. The, the They Built Our Happiness refers to the, the utopian communists who are trying to socially engineer Poland and economically engineer it and, and sort of pointing at them and saying, you know, they tried to build that, build their happiness. And then pointing to the, the people who were the entrepreneurs and the landowners and the business owners who were, who were destroyed, fought, jailed, tortured, killed in, in, in some instances, who, who, who in, a, in, a, in, in reality did build our happiness because the memory of ownership, be it property ownership or, or entrepreneurship, is the, is the reason that communism eventually fell. The, the film stretches from 1944 with the introduction of land reform, the, the first big communist move, land reform, going all the way through the nationalization of business, the so-called war against small business owners waged between 47 and 49, stretching all the way to the shifts in 56 vague reforms, and then covering the recreation in communist conditions of, of various um, market realities, free market realities, which, which inevitably came out even in the communist absurdity and the communists fight against these people. And it ends, it culminates in the reform instituted by Wilczek, uh, Wilczek being the, the one of the last communist finance ministers who introduced an incredibly liberal free market law in 1988 and allowed for the economic transformation of Poland. And the, 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 the film is a, is a rugged attempt at the defense of, of the principle of private ownership, entrepreneurship, and, and the free market. And it, it was a, entrepreneurship and property ownership are things that have been, these are subjects that have been very, they've, they've been left sort of buried. It's a topic that no one's really touched for a variety of reasons. And it's a topic that I believe is incredibly important for young people today in Poland to realize not just the ideological dangers of communism, but the, the practical implementation of it. Indeed. I think one can understand the, the, the ideological dangers of, of a totalitarian ideology, but, but um, looking at the way land was seized, the way businesses were seized, behind the ways that businesses that couldn't be seized were, were purposefully destroyed and their owners jailed, imprisoned, I mean, horrible things were, were done to all sorts of business owners. That, I think, is an incredibly important thing. And it's an incredibly important thing because memory is a is a very failing concept. It's surprising how fast we forget things. Well, I, I, we do. I mean, you do. If, I mean, take a silly example, or maybe not a silly example. The, the time I've been in Warsaw, the skyline has completely changed, yeah. and you forget that the building you now see was actually a a, a wasteland yeah. um, twenty years ago, or something like that. Or buildings come and yeah. go. They come and go. A, a, extraordinary, uh, and yeah. you do. For, we do forget things. So yeah. it's actually very important that that the films are made that you. There's an attempt to sort of collect yeah. the the raw memory before it's lost forever. Mm. So that's what that's what the, the the film was about, and it it was it, it was quite a, an interesting journey going through the the stretch of communism, the 45 years, and and seeing the way that it's an incredible thing that one of ultimately the reason that communism collapsed. There was a, a wide variety of reasons why it collapsed. The, the simplest answer being, it doesn't work. <laughs> but but the, the more complex reasons is, in 1986, Gorbachev um, announced that basically they, they couldn't financially continue to enforce their policies in, in, in the Eastern Bloc. And basically, he sort of waved his hand and, and said, you know, we can't let it go, basically. And that's what in eventually, inevitably allowed the, the reform. It's just the communists couldn't afford to keep going. It wasn't, it wasn't possible. And it's an, inc it's an incredible thing that, that basically 
It's an, incred it's an incredible thing to see how the, the, the free market operates. And I think one of the things that the, the film shows is that every, in, in economics, every small move, every small shift, you can follow its ripple and it inevitably will, will lead to a domino effect from, if you move one thing, it will lead to something else moving. Yes. And, and that was sort of, sort of trying to follow those, those steps as the communists maneuvered and, and then tried to sort of rebalance their own mistakes. And this very odd game of, um, you, you know the game with the little, the tower, the, the tower you take out of? Oh yes, a, exactly. Yeah. Of sort of badaboom, it's called in French of that effectively that's what they were sort of playing and they were sort of trying to rebalance this tower which which had to collapse because it because the the foundation the economic foundation isn't solid and that that's what the film was and it was a, a warning to my generation to people born after the transformation and, and 30 percent of poles have not lived a single day under a totalitarian regime which is one third of poles is basically basically born after 1989 so there is no living memory in, in, in one out of every th one out of three people in Poland doesn't have a living memory of, of that totalitarianism and of the dangers of communism. I think it's very important to understand the dangers and the risks. And I think that our parents generate, I mean, perhaps not my parents because we weren't in Poland, but when I speak to young people here, I don't believe that they've actually taken the lessons from their parents. I don't believe that they understand fully that 30, 30 odd years ago, there were empty shops. Yeah, and there it, were queues, hours, days. Because those are for those those are photographs which appear in yeah. history books, like yeah. any other photograph in history books. Yeah. And, it, and history is boring because social media is more exciting. Yeah. I mean, I've got I've got a, a friend here, just sort of slight digression, but on the say he, he runs business, mm. and he's always had on his desk a bust of Lenin. Just to remind his employers mm. that you know, if they don't like the capitalist way, there was another way, <laughs> <laughs> which is a rather dramatic way of it's illustrating. It's a very dramatic way. That. But... I mean, he's very nice. He's a very good employer, and people are very yeah. happy there, and he's very, very kind. But just you know, just as a way of reminding people that once upon a time things here were done rather differently, and it didn't really end particularly. I mean, the concept now we live in a land of plenty. The concept of empty, she uh, empty shelves in shops is just. Um, seems... you know, and now you're going to uh, even into yeah. the small, my little. Tiny little Polish you know, local food shop. You know, they got 15 different types of olive oil. I mean, yeah. <laughs> it's just extraordinary. Extraordinary, isn't it? and it's not a particularly good shop either. No, but it's uh, extraordinary that how how things have changed from empty shelves yeah. to 15 or 16 ty types of olive oil. I mean, that that's a tremendous improvement. Uh, and but you're right, young people forget. But that that's another. I think it's a wonderful thing is to sort of refine that sense of wonder in something that appears completely normal. It, it takes that that drastic situation to suddenly realize what a wonderful thing that you can walk into a shop and there are 15 types of for olive instance oil. olive oil it's a wonderful it thing a... and to regain that sense of wonder you need to go back to this to these dramatic events so well that's probably a good note on which to end this sense of wonder as we now go into shops where the shelves are overflowing and yeah. they're not empty stefan that's been fantastic talking about your films and, and thank you thank for you very sharing, much sharing your thoughts with us thank you nicholas for your time my pleasure thank you, thank you.